2 Samuel chapter 1 After the death of Saul, David returned from striking down the Amalekites and stayed in Ziklag two days. On the third day, a man arrived from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. When he came to David, he fell to the ground to pay him honour. Where have you come from? David asked him. He answered, I've escaped from the Israelite camp. What happened? David asked him. Tell me. The men fled from the battle, he replied. Many of them fell and died, and Saul and his son Jonathan are dead. Then David said to the young man who brought him the report, How do you know that Saul and his son Jonathan are dead? I happened to be on Mount Gilboa, the young man said, and there was Saul leaning on his spear with the chariots and their drivers in hot pursuit. When he turned round and saw me, he called out to me, and I said, What can I do? He asked me, Who are you? An Amalekite, I answered. Then he said to me, Stand here by me and kill me. I'm in the throes of death, but I'm still alive. So I stood beside him and killed him, because I knew that after he had fallen he could not survive. And I took the crown that was on his head and the band on his arm, and I brought them here to my lord. Then David and all the men with him took hold of their clothes and tore them. They mourned and wept and fasted till evening for Saul and his son Jonathan, and for the army of the Lord and for the nation of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. David said to the young man who brought him the report, Where are you from? I am the son of a foreigner and a Malachite, he answered. David asked him, Why weren't you afraid to lift your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Then David called one of his men and said, Go, strike him down. So he struck him down and he died. But David had said to him, Your blood be on your own head. Your own mouth testified against you when you said, I killed the Lord's anointed. David took up his lament concerning Saul and his son Jonathan, and he ordered that the people of Judah be taught this lament of the bow. It is written in the book of Jashar. A gazelle lies slain on your heights, Israel, how the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines be glad. Let the daughters, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised rejoice. Mountains of Gilboa, may you have neither dew nor rain. May no showers fall on your terraced fields. For there the shield of the mighty was despised, the shield of Saul no longer rubbed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the flesh of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back. The sword of Saul did not return unsatisfied. Saul and Jonathan, in life they were loved and admired, and in death they were not parted. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Daughters of Israel, weep for Saul, who clothed you in scarlet and finery, who adorned your garments with ornaments of, of gold. How the mighty have fallen in battle! Jonathan lies slain on your heights. I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. You were very dear to me. Your love for me was wonderful, more wonderful than that of women. How the mighty have fallen. The weapons of war have perished. Chapter 2 In the course of time, David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up to one of the towns of Judah? he asked. The Lord said, Go up. David asked, Where shall I go? To Hebron, the Lord answered. So David went up there with his two wives, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David also took the men who were with him, each with his family, and they settled in Hebron and its towns. Then the men of Judah came to Hebron and they were anointed, and they anointed David king over the tribe of Judah. When David was told that it was the men from Jabesh Gilead who had buried Saul, he sent messengers to them to say to them, The Lord bless you for showing this kindness to Saul your master by burying him. May the Lord now show you kindness and faithfulness, and I too will show you the same favour because you have done this. Now then, be strong and brave, for Saul your master is dead. The people of Judah have anointed me king over them. Meanwhile, Abner, son of Ner, the commander of Saul's army, had taken Ishbosheth, son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim. 
He made him king over Gilead, <clears throat> Ashuri and Jezreel, and also over Ephraim, Benjamin, and all Israel. Ishbosheth, son of Saul, was 40 years old when he became king over Israel, and he reigned two years. The tribe of Judah, however, remained loyal to David. The length of time David was king in Hebron over Judah was seven years and six months. Abner, son of Ner, together with the men of Ishbosheth, son of Saul, left Mahanaim and went to Gibeon. Joab, son of Zeruiah, and David's men went out and met them at the pool of Gibeon. One group sat down on one side of the pool and one group on the other side. Then Abner said to Joab, Let's have some of the young men get up and fight hand to hand in front of us. All right, let them do it, Joab said. So they stood up and were counted, twelve men for Benjamin and Ishbosheth, son of Saul, and twelve for David. Then each man grabbed his opponent by the head and thrust his dagger into his opponent's side, and they fell down together. So the place in Gibeon was called Helkath Hazurim. The battle that day was very fierce. Abner and the Israelites were defeated by David's men. The three sons of Zeruiah were there, Joab, Abishai and Asael. Now Asael was as fleet-footed as a wild gazelle. He chased Abner, turning neither to the right nor the left as he pursued him. Abner looked behind him and asked, Is that you, Asael? It is, he answered. Then Abner said to him, Turn aside to the right or to the left. Take on one of the young men and strip him of his weapons. But Asahel would not stop chasing him. Again, Abner warned Asahel, Stop chasing me. Why should I strike you down? How could I look your brother Joab in the face? But Asahel refused to give up the pursuit, so Abner thrust the butt of his spear into Asahel's stomach and the spear came out through his back. He fell there and died on the spot. And every man stopped when he came to the place where Asahel had fallen and died. But Joab and Abishai pursued Abner, and as the sun was setting, they came to the hill of Amma near Gia on the way to the wasteland of Gibeon. Then the men of Benjamin rallied behind Abner. They formed themselves into a group and took their stand on the top of a hill. Abner called out to Joab, Must the sword devour forever? Don't you realise that this will end in bitterness? How long before you order your men to stop pursuing their fellow Israelites? Jo Joab answered, as surely as God lives, if you had not spoken, the men would have continued pursuing them until morning. So Joab blew the trumpet and all the troops came to a halt. They no longer pursued Israel, nor did they fight any more. All that night, Abner and his men marched through Araba. They crossed the Jordan, continued through the, north, the morning hours and came to Mahanaim. When Joab stopped pursuing Abner and assembled the whole army beside Asahel, Nineteen of David's men were found missing, but David's men had killed 360 Benjaminites who were with Abner. They took Asahel and buried him in his father's tomb at Bethlehem. Then Joab and his men marched all night and arrived at De Hebron by daybreak. 1 Chronicles <clears throat> chapter 11 All Israel came together to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, even while Saul was king, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord your God said to you, You will, be, you will shepherd my people Israel and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, he made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord and they anointed David king over Israel as the Lord had promised through Samuel. David and all the Israelites marched to Jerusalem, that is Jabus. The Jebusites who lived there said to David, You will not get in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. David had said, Whoever leads the attack on the Jebusites will become commander-in-chief. And Joab, son of Zeruiah, went up first, so he received the command. David then took up residence in the fortress, and so it was called the City of David. He built up the city around it from the terraces to the surrounding wall, while Joab restored the rest of the city, and David became more and more powerful because the Lord Almighty was with him. These were the chiefs of David's mighty warriors. They, together with all Israel, 
gave his kingship strong support to extend it over the whole land, as the Lord had promised. This is the list of David's mighty warriors. Jashabim, a a Hakmonite, was chief of the officers. He raised his spear against 300 men whom he killed in one encounter. Next to him was Eleazar, son of Dodai, the Ahahite, one of the three mighty warriors. He was with David at Pas Damim when the Philistines gathered there for battle. At a place where there was a field full of barley, the troops fled from the Philistines, but they took their stand in the middle of the field. They defended it and struck the Philistines down, and the Lord brought them a, brought about a great victory. Three of the thirty chiefs came down to David to the rock at the cave of Adulam, while a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Raphaim. At that time, David was in the stronghold, and the Philistine garrison was at Bethlehem. David longed for water and said, Oh, that someone would get me a drink of water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem, and carried it back to David, but he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out to the Lord. God forbid that I should do this, he said. Should I drink the blood of these men who were at the who went to risk who went at the risk of their lives? Because they risked their lives to bring it back, David would not drink it. Such were the exploits of the three mighty warriors. Abishai, the brother of Joab, was chief of the three. He raised his spear against three hundred men whom he killed, and so he became as famous as the three. He was doubly honoured above the three and became their commander, even though he was not included among them. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant fighter from Kabzeel, performed great exploits. He struck down Moab's two mightiest warriors. He also went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. And he struck down an Egyptian who was five cubits tall, although the Egyptian had a spear like a weaver's rod in his hand. Benaniah went against him with a club. He snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. Such were the exploits of Benaniah, son of Benaniah, son of Jehoiada. He was who he too was as famous as the three mighty warriors. He was held in greater honor than any of the thirty, but he was not included among the three, as David and David put him in charge of his bodyguard. The mighty warriors were. Asahel, the brother of Joab, Elhanan, son of Dodo from Bethlehem, Shamoth the Hararite, Helez the Pelonite, Ira, son of Ikesh from Kitakoa, Abiezer from Anathoth, Sibakai the Hushathite, Eli the Aholahite, Maharai the Netophathite, Heled, son of Barna, the Netophathite, Ittai, son of Ribai, from, the Gib- from Gibeah in Benjamin, Beniah, the, the Pirithonite, Hurai, from the ravines of Gash, Abiel, the Aperithite, Asmaveth, the Bahurmite, Eliabar, the Shalbanite, the sons of Hashem, the Gizanite, Jonathan, son of Shaggy, the Haraharite, Ahiam, son of Sakar, the Hatterite, Eliaphel, son of Ur, Hefer, the Mechathite, Ahijah, the Pelonite, Hezro, the Carmelite, Narai, son of Ezbi, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Mibhar, son of Hagri, Zelek, the Ammonite, Naharai, the Berathite, the armour-bearer of Joab, son of Zeroiah, Ira, the Ithite, Garab, the Ithrite, Uriah, the Hittite, Zabad, son of Alai, Adina, son of Shiza, the Reubenite, who was chief of the Reubenites, and the thirty with him. Hanan, son of Marka, Joshaphat, the Mithnite, Uziah, the Ashtarathite, Sharma and Jael, the sons of Hotham, the Ararite, Judael, son of Shimri, his brother Joha, the Tizite, Alil, the Mahathite, Jerubai the Josh- and Joshua, Joshuaiah, the sons of Elnam, Ithmar, the Moabite, Eliel, Obed, Jazeel, the Mezrabite.
Psalm 96 Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among all the people. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendour and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth and say among the nations, The Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord. For he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Psalm 106 Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare his praise? Blessed are those who act justly, who always do what is right. Remember me, Lord, when you show favour to your people. Come to my aid when you save them, that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation and join, in, join your inheritance in giving praise. We have sinned, even as our ancestors did. We have done wrong and acted wickedly. When our ancestors were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your miracles. They did not remember your many kindnesses. And they rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. Yet he saved them for his name's sake to make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea and it dried up. He led them through the depths as through a desert. He saved them from the hand of the foe, from the hand of the enemy. He redeemed them. The waters covered their adversaries, but not one of them survived. Then they believed his promises and sang his praise. But they soon forgot what he had done and did not wait for his, plans, for his plan to unfold. In the desert they gave in to their craving. In the wilderness they put God to the test. So he gave them what they asked for, but sent a wasting disease among them. In the camp they grew envious of Moses and of Aaron, who was consecrated to the Lord. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan. It buried the company of Abiram. Fire blazed among their followers, a flame consumed the wicked. At Horeb they made a calf and worshipped an idol cast from metal. They exchanged their glorious God for an image of a bull which eats grass. They forgot the God who saved them, who had done great things in Egypt, miracles in that land of Ham and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. So he said he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying them. Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his promise. They grumbled in their tents and did not obey the Lord. So he swore to them with uplifted hand that he would make them fall in the wilderness, make their descendants fall among the nations and scatter them throughout the lands. They yoked themselves to the Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices offered to lifeless gods. They roused the Lord's anger by their wicked deeds and a plague broke out among them. But Phineas stood up and intervened, and the plague was checked. This was credited to him as righteousness for endless generations to come. By the waters of Meribah they angered the Lord, and trouble came to Moses because of them. For They rebelled against the Spirit of God, and the rash words came from Moses' lips. They did not destroy the peoples as the Lord had commanded them, but they mingled them with the nations and adopted their customs. They worshipped their idols 
which became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to false gods. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. And the land was desecrated by their blood. They defiled themselves by what they did. By their deeds they prostituted themselves. Therefore the Lord was angry with his people and abhorred his inheritance. He gave them into the hands of the nations and their foes ruled over them. Their enemies oppressed them and subjected them to their power. Many times he delivered them, but they were bent on rebellion and they wasted away in their sin. Yet he took note of their distress when he heard their cry. For their sake he remembered their, his covenant, and out of his great love he relented. He caused all who held them captive to show them mercy. Save us, Lord our God, and gather us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 21 After we had torn ourselves away from them, we put out to sea and sailed straight to Cos. The next day we went to Rhodes, and from there to Patera. We found a ship crossing to Phoenicia, went on board and set sail. After sighting Cyprus and passing to the south of it, we sailed to Syria, and we landed at Tyre, where our ship was to unload its cargo. We sought out the disciples there and stayed with them seven days, through the Spirit they urged Paul not to go to, on to Jerusalem. When it was time to leave, we left and continued on our way. All of them, including wives and children, accompanied us out of the city. And there on the beach we knelt to pray. After saying goodbye to each other, we went aboard the ship and they returned home. We continued our voyage from Tyre and landed at Ptolemy, where we greeted the brothers and sisters and stayed with them for a day. Leaving the next day, we, went to, we reached Caesarea, and stayed at the house of Philip the Evangelist, one of the seven. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. After we had been there a number of days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Coming over to us, he took Paul's belt, tied his own hands and feet with it, and said, The Holy Spirit says, In this way the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will bind the owner of its belt, and will hand him over to the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people were pleaded with Paul not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. When he would not be dissuaded, we gave up and said, The Lord's will be done. After this, we started on our way up to Jerusalem. Some of the disciples from Caesarea accompanied us and brought us to the home of Nason, where we were to stay. He was a man from Cyprus and one of the early disciples. When we arrived at Jerusalem, the brothers and sisters received us warmly. The next day, Paul and the rest of us went to see James and all the elders were present. Paul greeted them and reported in detail what God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. When they heard this, they praised God. Then they said to Paul, You see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed and all of them are zealous for the law. They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or live according to their customs. What shall we do? They will certainly hear that you have come, so do what we tell you. There are four men with us who have made a vow. Take these men, join in their purification rites and pay their expenses so that they can have their heads shaved. Then everyone will know that there is no truth in these reports about you, but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law. As for the Gentile believers, we have written to them for our decision that they should abstain from food offered, sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals and from sexual immorality. The next day, Paul took the men and purified himself along with them. Then he went to the temple to give notice of the date when the days of purification would end and the offering would be made for each of them. When the seven days were nearly over, some Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul at the temple. They stirred up the whole crowd and seized him, shouting, Fellow Israelites, help us! This is the man who teaches everyone everywhere against our people and our law and this place. And besides, he has brought Greeks into the temple and defiled this holy place. 
They had previously seen Trophimus the Ephesian in the city with Paul and assumed that Paul had brought him into the temple. The whole city was aroused and the people came running from all directions. Seizing Paul, they dragged him from the temple and immediately the gates were shut. While they were trying to kill him, news reached the command of the Roman troops that the whole city of Jerusalem was in uproar. He at once took some officers and soldiers and ran down to the crowd. When the rioters saw the commander and his soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. The commander came up and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. Then he asked who he was and what he had done, and some in the crowd shouted one thing and some another. And since the commander could not get at the truth because of the uproar, he ordered that Paul be taken into the barracks. When Paul reached the steps, the violence of the mob was so great he had to be carried by the soldiers. that The crowd that fell, followed kept shouting, Get rid of him! As the soldiers were about to take Paul into the barracks, he asked the commander, May I say something to you? Do you speak Greek? he replied. Aren't you the Egyptian who started a revolt and led 4,000 terrorists out into the wilderness some time ago? Paul answered, I'm a Jew from Tarsus and Cilicia, a citizen of no ordinary city. Please let me speak to the people. 